everyone and happy Monday. Welcome to another Johanna Bassford planner page. We have a lovely leafy um, circle. Today I've done this one quite a few times from Enchanted Forest. Um, I thought we would do something a little bit different with it today. I've got my Castle Arts Botanical set. I think most of these might be in the 72. They'll certainly all be in the 120 Castle Arts set. Um, but you can follow along with any set. Um, <clears throat> excuse me I'm just going to show you how to do a few leaves in a sort of different way really I'm going to use purples and pinks rather than greens I just thought it might be fun so we'll come in closer and then make a start um, I'm going to pick this bunch here just four there we'll do those four and uh, my camera's quite far away I think it'll be okay though it's, uh, I, I lifted it up. So I'm going to start with the what they call purple, okay, which is quite a pinky colour, I think. And I'm going to do the stem up to the base of each of the leaves to start with. Whoops. Like that. Um, this one's really different to these, but I think we'll include it in this little bunch. I'll probably do all the leaves on the page in the same way anyway. <clears throat> and my plan is to continue that to the bottom of the leaf and then start to fade it up like that. It's quite an intense colour, isn't it? But that's okay. Now, I realise that colouring leaves not in green can be tricky. For some people to do i used to find it tricky as well but i'm thinking we're in the enchanted forest you know the leaves might be a bit magical a little bit different and it's quite fun sometimes just popping in some different colors i think particularly in books where there's lots of leaves like um, magical jungle and enchanted forest for example your greens will wear out and get very small and uh, so you might want to try some different colors and it also um make it a little bit more interesting for you if you've got some different you know something a bit different but I know it can be difficult to uh, sort of do something a little bit different step out of the comfort zone but we'll see so that's the beginning of the leaves <clears throat> Let's just pop that down over there excuse me and now we're going to use the heather purple which is the darkest purple in this set to do the other end of the leaf of the leaves sorry and bring it down towards the middle we're not going to we don't want them to touch we're going to put another color in the middle but we just want to start to fade it like that i think i'm just going to do this one in the dark color whoops like that and then fade this one down Looks quite nice with a white middle, I think. But uh, that isn't the plan. <laughs> um, where are we going here? So I hope everyone's doing well. I can't believe we're sort of mid-July. Uh, it isn't, it's actually only the 2nd of July when I'm colouring this in. But it's still July. Where's the year gone? I feel, I have this theory that it goes faster as we get older. Because, um we're getting older so it feels faster in the sense that it's hard to explain when you're a baby you have a year and you're a year old that's your whole life it would feel long but once you get two to the age of two a year is half your life and the older you get the sort of shorter as a percentage of your life a year is and i think that's why it feels like it's flying by but that's my theory now we have the two slightly lighter tones, the mauve and the rose pink. And we're going to use those to sort of bring it all together. I'm going to start with the mauve. I find it funny because this mauve is a light lilac-y colour. In polychromos pencils, the mauve is the uh, darkest purple. So I'm going to bring that all the way down to the pink. Like that. And do the same on all of them. But obviously that looks a bit ick, but <laughs> ick. Who is it that uses that word? My son, I think. <laughs> I 
but we'll get it sorted out in a minute. This is just a temporary step in our process. Like that. And then we grab the rose and you've probably guessed what we're going to do is to take it up from there and mix it up in that direction. And really you just want to keep layering it until you're happy with that blend. You could blend it in a really different way but it's just a it's just a different idea. Now I do think I will probably do all my leaves like this, like I said. I think it could be um quite fun. But we have other elements on the page to think about. So we've got to decide what to do with those. We have the owl. I think you can see them here. We also have flowers. Now I had firstly occurred to me to maybe do the flowers green to sort of almost make it opposites. But I decided that I don't like that idea. Um, you could do it. Um, I did do a picture once where all the florals were green and all the leaves were just any old colour, anything but green, which was uh, different, but uh, not this one. So there are the leaves. You can work and work at them until you're happy with the blend. I might even go back whoops, in with the darker purple a little bit. This is the heather purple and just bring that down a tad. blend a bit more. You could just do it with the two, the purple and the dark pink and not worry about the lighter shades but I think that makes it harder. And I'm going to go in with the darker purple, whoops, so you can see it, there we go, and finish this off a bit. Um, now so the flowers I think I'm going to do in blues so that we've got a sort of matching in colour which I think will be quite fun. Now, the background of this, I'm tempted to um, to do it in, oh, let's finish that and then I can concentrate and talk. Um, <clears throat> I'm tempted to do the background in black. I'm going out of the lines a lot. I think it might tidy it up. Oh, there's a train. And I think it might just work with these colours, although this is quite dark, I think it might work. We have got very dark eyes on our owl though. So that's something to consider, but I think what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I've shown you the leaves, I'm going to show you the flowers and the owl, and then I'm going to go away and finish the leaves, take a photo, and then I'm going to do a black background, take another photo, and you can decide which you like the best. I won't, it won't be a vote, <laughs> but you can think about whether you want to do a black background on yours or not. So here are our florals. I'm just looking. I think that, oh, there's some bluebells higher up as well. So we've got these flowers, okay? And I've got, oops, ow, I just kicked the desk. Mm, I've got a sore knee today. I'm trying to be careful. And um, we've got two blues in this set, the ultramarine and the cerulean blue light. I'm going to use those for the flowers. We're going to keep it quite simple. Now with these large ones, we've got this big, um, center part which isn't exposed in fully in any of them but I quite like the idea of doing that to look a little like a gemstone and I'll show you so a really dark edge and then less well it's actually quite hard still as we're going in towards the middle but start to reduce the amount of layers as you go towards the centre. So there's less. And then what I will do is, I won't do it now, is put uh, some white pen sort of around the edges to make it look like shine. And so it's no good me doing it now because I'll only smudge it. So do those three all the same. Okay, now these little ones, I think I do the same too. 
I want it to be consistent so that the colours I use match up together, if that makes sense. So we use the cerulean blue light for the petals. Okay, I'll show you on this one. So really I just want to try and make them a little bit darker and a few more layers at the nearer the centre than on the edge. A little bit tricky with such a small area. In fact what I did with another um, version of this that I did was on the ends of each petal I actually used a little bit of white pen to uh, to get rid of the uh, to make it look more faded it was quite effective it's, I've actually got a video of that um, it was from Miniature Enchanted Forest I did a sort of pink flower so I'll try and remember I'll write that down now um, Um, I'll try and I'll put it in the description so you can have a look at that if you want to try something a little bit different to this because I have to admit that dark blue centre doesn't look very natural these blues aren't very <sighs> organic really this is more like a sky blue I think rather than a sort of flower blue but uh, it's okay so just continuing like that so darker near the center lighter towards the edge on all the petals now we do have um so the same on these and these this has got a little rim around the edge and i would just do that in the dark layer of this pencil okay and the blue bells there we go to fill in the top like that and then just fade it down like that okay and the same for the other one exactly the same I do a few more of these just so you can see I'm not in shot it usually helps if the camera's on me doesn't it I like this and then we'll do the owl now the black background I'm going to do in a Posca pen I would always um, advise doing a black background in pen it's hard work in pencil. Any pencil you would have to layer up quite a lot to get a really solid background look and it takes a lot of work. There are disadvantages with pen too. If you use like a normal water based um, marker, felt pen type thing, they can look quite streaky particularly if they're running out and an oil based pen like a Copic marker will bleed through the page which could be okay on a book like this if you don't use the back, being a planner. Um, but in a normal colouring book, I think most people tend to avoid using them unless they've got a single-sided book. But I might be wrong, you might be happy to uh, waste the page behind, maybe, but uh, I'm not sure I would be. Now in between these petals here we've got little white gaps. I don't know how clearly they're showing up. I'm going to colour them in this because they would be these petals that are behind. They would come all the way to the centre of the flower. So they would be this same colour. Um, the other option for black um, would be like a... I don't know if I've got one in here. Yep, I've got like a, this sort of pen. Um, uh, Sakura. It's quite small on the nib. This is an only 06 nib, which is quite small. I think it is anyway. I'm not sure. Or, um, yeah, that's a blending pen. I think that's all I've got. So the Posca is what I'm going to use. This is obviously a white one. <laughs> I'm not going to use a white one. Um, and the, this is a 0.7mm tip. Now, you don't want a big one for these little details. That's the smallest tip you can get in a Posca. And so getting in between all these details, you know, you do need a small nib. Um, you also need to think about um, how far you're going outside, because obviously this is a circle. So are you going to go to the edge of this? And if so, are you going to draw a circle to get it ex really exact? Or are you going to go right out to the outside of the paper? I haven't decided yet, because... To draw that circle around you need a compass. I don't want to stick a compass in the middle of my page, it'll make a hole. So I'm going to show you one of these so you can see what the little ones look like. 
so I'm going to use exactly the same technique. So I'm not really sure, I think you could find something to draw around but it would need to be, I've got a circle making tool which might be my answer if it's big enough. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be big enough. But if I can't get an exact circle, I will go right to the outside because I'm not very good. You might be good at going and just getting a nice even line, not me. So um, I'm not going to do that. Now I'm just looking for any other little details. Sometimes Johanna puts insects and things in there. I can see one here. We've got this. Oh, there's some more flowers here. Look, they're the same as the ones at the top. So we will do them in the blues. I will do them in the blues, just exactly the same. These have got little circles on those little circles i will do in the dark blue of the center okay right owl now i'm going to do the owl in gray i've only got one gray in this set so that makes it easier but his eyes now he's got his um the iris bit of his eye here i'm going to do in blue so that it sort of stands out and I'm only, I'm choosing blue because we're going to have lots of this colour everywhere and so and it, there's just going to be a few hints of blue so I think it might just tie in better but when you see it at the end you can decide now what I do with eyes is I keep it simple but I make it darker at the top and a bit lighter towards the bottom like that so I almost leave a white gap. Uh, I think it just looks a bit more like there's a bit of a shine or something going on. Now we have, oh, I've got Payne's grey. That's an interesting grey. <laughs> there's loads of it left. <laughs> I um, I don't think I need my pencil extender. But well, I'll give it a go. Now we have got these little curl bits here coming off the eyebrows. And I want those to stand out over the head behind so I'm going to colour those in first and go over them a fair bit and the same with these lovely eyebrows which I'm going to make slightly darker at each end and a bit lighter on the top if I can it's a small old space like that and then the head I'm going to do quite lightly so I'm going to just press really gently I can layer up if it's too light but I just want to get a light layer down I will judge at the end whether I need a little more now that bit under the eye I'm leaving that as white of the eye I don't know if owls have a white of the eye but I think it helps to emphasize the blue to have that white you could do that in white pen if you wanted it to really look white because this paper isn't white but I think it's fine as it is now the beak I'm going to do later so this is all similar um, I'm getting a little bit darker down here that we needed to be particularly white and the top of the head might be catching the light I want to do the belly lighter though I'm just going to press less hard really gently this is quite a strong colour so it's got a lot of pigment so you can press lightly and still get enough colour down on the page. And I can't decide what to do with this bit. Now I'm actually going to recolour that in this direction because the feathers would be going this way. I keep thinking it's raining. I don't think it is though. There we go. a bit of dark under there there'd be some shadow and under the beak now I think I'm going to do the beak in black um, I'm not going to make it as black as the eyes but this is just the um, ivory black I think it's always quite tempting to do beaks yellow and I do like doing that but uh, we I don't want any of those sorts of warm colours in this picture now I am going to add some white to the eye and I will show you that before I finish um, if I can find the correct pen yeah um, this is a Sakura white but it's a 05 so it's a very fine pen 
And what I want to do is do a little bit of light in the eye, like that, because I think it's too dark. Hmm, there we go. So I can show you also what I'm going to do with the flowers. Whoops, I probably would use a thicker pen than this, but as I've got it in my hand, actually it's a bit thin, isn't it? It may not show up on this blue. Some, some, um, some of the these pens actually go pink. I think. Um, I'm going to do a bit on all of them like that. Some of them go pink. I don't. It's, a, it's not that one. I don't think. And when you put white on them, oh, it is slightly starting to go pink. I think. I might use my bleed proof white on that. Um, I'll see, have a think when it's finished. So I'm going to do that effect on all of the flower centres and you can see it just makes it look very slightly jewel-like. You know, I think it's quite fun. So I'm going to go away and finish, do all the flat, all the leaves, all the flowers in exactly the same way as I've shown you, then take a photograph, then do a black background, then take a photograph and then you'll be able to see um, what what, how it looks and which um, idea you're going to go with. I think the black's going to be a winner for me because of the amount of coming out of the lines I've done, but I, st I go over the edges with black, but it's somehow not quite so noticeable that way around. <laughs> but it's better to do the black pen last. You People often say backgrounds first or last. When you're doing Posca pen, it's better to do it last because you can... Um, pencil shows up on top of it basically so unless you want some pencil on top of it if you go out the lines like me it's better to do it last and then you cover that over whereas if you do it if I did it first I'd be going over the lines on top of the Posca and that isn't what I wanted anyway I'm going to finish there and uh, and and get on in my own time and finish this off and uh, and put, get some photos ready for you so thank you so much for watching um, enjoy your Monday and the rest of the week hope but tune in later there'll be another video later and um, tomorrow as always but for now thank you for watching um, please subscribe if you haven't already um, it's just a little click and you can click the bell and you can select how many notifications you get from none to all to some so it means that if you don't want to be bothered by notifications you don't have to be but subscribing just helps the channel to grow and um, which helps to encourage more people to colour. So thank you so much and uh, have a lovely day and happy colouring.